Anyone who tinkers with electronics should have multimeters laying around the house. I have many, from very expensive flukes to inexpensive Harbor Freight specials. But I never really saw the need of having a bench top multimeter until I saw this guy. And this is why. Now this Bell & Howe model number IMD202-TAC2 is just a rebadged Heathkit IM1212 from the mid-70s. These were manufactured somewhere between 1975 to 1977. At the time, you can order them pre-assembled or you can order them as a kit. If you order the pre-assembled one, it'd be a slightly different model number. And these were really great units for individuals learning about electronics and trying, one, trying to troubleshoot and diagnose just issues around the house. But today, this is certainly not your unit of record. You're not going to be using this as a calibration device. But let's see how close we can get it to almost perfect. You see I have our DC power supply on the bench here that's dialed into 15 volts DC. Let's see how close it is with a modern multimeter. 14.93. That's certainly close enough. I'm not even going to try to adjust that. So now let's hook up our Bell and & Howell and see how close it is. You notice I'm going to be plugging a red banana clip into the negative. Uh, it's just because I don't have a black banana clip handy. 13.8 volts DC. All right, so we're about a, a solid uh, one volt, volt off. Not a big deal. We're going to calibrate that. Later on, we're going to open up this unit, and I'll show you some of the pots inside, and we can see how accurate we can get this. But this is a good moment to actually look at that number. You see we have three digits displaying, but only two of those are Nixie tubes. It's only the two on the right that change. The one on the far left, the number one, is just that. It's solely a number one. It'll only ever display one. But the two on the right are actual Nixie tubes that will change. An interesting thing about this one is if we change our range, you see we have an overlight. That tells you that you need to change your scale. And then the one will come in showing 13.8. Before we open the unit, let's take a quick look around, see what features we have, and the overall construction. It does come with a three-prong power lead. This is obviously for the U.S. It is hardwired into the back of the unit, so if you did have any damage to one of these, you will have to open the unit up to replace it. I'm going to keep this cable for now, but it, it just feels a little old. It is a 1970s power cable, and I'm not going to be using this unit all the time. So for the time being, we're going to keep this cable. Up front, as we saw before, we have our two Nixie tubes, our number one light, as well as our overlight. Two dials to turn it on, select DC or AC, as well as your range. It'll also do continuity and you have three plugs on the side for your banana clips. We have four plastic feet at the bottom. No grip on them. I might throw some grip just to give it a, so it doesn't slide around on the workbench. The front two feet have little flip tabs to give you a little better viewing angle. The unit's incredibly easy to get into. We have four flathead screws on both the left and the right side. That's all we need to take off to get into the unit. Surprisingly, the unit is incredibly clean on the inside. I expected a little bit more dust on it. There's no vents in this unit, so I didn't expect a whole lot going in. But due to its age, I expected some sort of buildup inside. So this was either not used a whole lot or used in a really clean environment. You get a little better shot of the Nixie tubes inside as well as the two indicator lamps. The lamps provide the one as well as the over light. We see adjustment pots as well as our two main pots, which I'm going to hit with a little bit of contact cleaner. I haven't had any issues, but we're in here, so we might as well give it a shot. In the back, under the cardboard protector, you see our main transformer, which gives power to the entire unit. And on the far left, we do have some test points. So there wasn't much cleanup inside the multimeter, but we did wipe down the Nixie tubes. But now is the moment of truth. Can we get this close to our modern digital multimeter? 
I have the DC power supply plugged directly into our bell and howl, and I'm going to piggyback our modern multimeter on the front. So the modern one is reading 4.99. That's pretty close. We're going to keep it at that. I'm going to find our DC adjustment knob and see if we can get this close. Spoiler alert, this is Mike from the future here. This is not the correct way to do this, and we're going to learn very soon. It's very finicky. One point four, fourteen point nine. That's perfect. I'm gonna mess with it a little bit more off camera. It does seem when we have the new multimeter in a little bit of a draw. Maybe that was throwing that off. I might even clean those pots a little bit. Let's see if we can get this dialed in a little bit more. So I went through trying to calibrate this. I found an old Bell and Howe calibration manual online. Went through all the procedures. Everything was going. Perfect. But then something unusual happened. Well, number one, I didn't notice the writing on top of the transformer. 1.790. This is the calibration voltage, both AC and DC, for this unit. The calibration manual references this. I went through, zeroed everything in the manual, started going through it, and this unusual thing happened. So if we're going to test volts DC with the internal test point, it should read 1.79. Well, the 1 doesn't show up, and I adjusted it to 0.79, and the scale is correct per the manual. So I thought, well, maybe the 1 is just burnt out. However, if we look at the AC test point, now this is also 1.79. If I can get it on there. 1.79, the 1 illuminates. But if we go back to DC, it doesn't. Uh, other than that, it works fine. It's just when we're measuring DC voltage, the one doesn't illuminate. I don't know why. Might have to do some more troubleshooting on this. Well, it works. And it works perfectly. AC voltages are right there. DC voltages are right there. Everything is working great. So what happened? The calibration manual has a step where it says value has to be over 0.85. I interpret this to be over 0.85. Could be 9. Could be 1. That was wrong, and that screwed up every adjustment after that. What the manual intended is that the overlight, you remember the overlight, so if you're making a measurement and it's above the scale, the overlight would illuminate and you would change your scale. What the manual intended is that the overlight is to be illuminated and the value is to be 0.85. Once that was dialed in, everything worked perfectly. So much so that this is on par with my Fluke as far as accuracy. It's a really great little meter. It's going to stay on the bench and you're going to see it again in future videos. Speaking of future videos, if you like what we're doing over here, please like and subscribe. We'll see you next time.